Hello, and welcome to the Dell EMC PowerStore video series. In this video, we will be showing how an administrator can create a multi-appliance PowerStore cluster. There are a few different topics that we will cover in this PowerStore video. First, we will review what clustering means for PowerStore. Following that, we will cover more details on the different supported cluster configurations. We will then review the two methods of creating a multi-appliance cluster, first through the initial configuration wizard, and then through the Add Appliance Wizard. Following this, we'll cover any additional requirements and recommendations. Lastly, a video demonstration will be shown on adding an appliance to an existing cluster. A PowerStore cluster is made up of one or more appliances joined in a federation. This means that you can have a single appliance PowerStore cluster or a multi-appliance PowerStore cluster. Benefits of creating a multi-appliance cluster include scaling out the PowerStore solution, more appliances means additional compute and front-end connectivity, as well as increased limits. Adding additional appliances also allows you to scale up the solution by adding more NVMe storage in the base enclosure, or providing the potential for additional expansion enclosures with the new appliance. The PowerStore cluster still uses the PowerStore manager and allows you to easily manage multiple appliances at once when they are within the same cluster. Finally, a multi-appliance cluster allows for high availability during service procedures and tech refreshes. Seamless migration of resources from one appliance to another allow you to remove, service, or replace an appliance within the cluster while keeping your resources online. A PowerStore cluster contains a single master appliance, which runs cluster management services and resources. This includes hosting the single cluster management IP, the global storage discovery IP, and the primary management database the other appliances will reference. If the master appliance were to experience an issue, the master services can fail over to a surviving appliance in the cluster. One thing to note is that each appliance has their own set of resources and data. Data is not striped across multiple appliances. Each appliance has dual nodes and many high availability features to ensure that data remains accessible. Multi-appliance clusters are only supported with PowerStore T model appliances. PowerStore X model appliances cannot be clustered. They are only single appliance clusters. For PowerStore T model appliances, there are a maximum of four appliances within a cluster. It is important to note that different PowerStore T models can be mixed within the same cluster, such as clustering a PowerStore 1000T and a PowerStore 3000T. At the time of creation, the master appliance can be configured as either a unified or block optimized appliance. Once this is selected, the configuration cannot be changed. Any additional appliances that are included or added into the cluster will automatically be converted to block optimized. If you wish to change the deployment mode of an appliance, it must be removed from the cluster and a factory reinitialization performed. If you plan to join it back into the cluster, Note that it will automatically be converted to block optimized. Let's review the two different ways to create a multi-appliance cluster. The first method is to create the multi-appliance cluster right away during the initial configuration process. The initial configuration wizard will allow users to create a cluster with one to four PowerStore T appliances. When configuring the appliance by directly connecting a workstation to the service port, the appliance you are connected to will become the master appliance. If you select either Unified or Block Optimized during the initial configuration wizard, this configuration will be applied to that appliance. Once in the wizard, you have the option to select any additional unconfigured appliances discovered on the network. When you select these appliances, they will be automatically configured as Block Optimized, no matter what the deployment mode of the master appliance is. If you are discovering the appliances using the Discovery Utility, you can select multiple appliances within the Discovery Utility itself. The first appliance you select will be designated as the master appliance, and any additional selected appliances will be included in the initial configuration wizard. Once inside the wizard, you can still modify the selection of appliances again if you choose to do so. The other way to create a multi-appliance cluster is to add an appliance to an existing, already configured cluster. The same sizing rules are enforced, and you cannot exceed four appliances within a single cluster. The configured cluster must be in a healthy state to support adding any additional appliances. Only a single appliance can be added at a time. If you wish to add multiple appliances to an existing cluster, then you can perform that one at a time. 
Only uninitialized appliances can be added to a cluster. It is not possible to merge a cluster by adding an already configured appliance. Finally, all added appliances will be automatically converted to block optimized deployment mode. Lastly, all appliances within the same cluster must be in the same data center and on the same local area network to ensure low latency communication between the appliances. When creating a multi appliance cluster during the initial configuration wizard, the master appliance will require four management network IPs and two storage network IPs. Optionally, a third storage network IP can be used as a global storage discovery IP address. Every additional appliance that is included in the cluster will require an additional three management IPs and two storage IPs. Lastly, ensure that native untagged traffic can route between appliances if they are on different switches. This is required as the internal cluster communication uses untagged IPv6 packets. When adding an appliance to an existing cluster, the additional appliance will require the three additional management IPs and two storage IPs referenced above. In this demonstration, we will be adding a PowerStore 1000T appliance to an existing already configured PowerStore cluster with a single 7000T appliance. From the dashboard page, click Hardware. Note that right now, there's only a single appliance in the cluster. Click Add. All unconfigured PowerStore T appliances discovered on the network will be shown here. For this demonstration, the PowerStore 1000T will be added. Select the appliance. Click Next. The appliance needs to reboot into block optimized mode. Click Reboot. The reboot takes a few minutes to complete. Once completed, click Next. Management and storage network IPs need to be added for the new appliance. These IPs can be added ahead of time on the settings page of the cluster. If that had already been done, this step will be skipped. Click Configure Now. Click Add Network IPs. Click Add. Here I will enter in a range for the three more management network IPs. Click Add. Click Close. Click Continue. This process is now repeated for the two storage network IPs. Now that all necessary IPs are added, click Next. Click Validate to validate the information and prepare to add the appliance. A few warnings appear due to our lab environment. These are acceptable. Click Add Appliance. The Add Appliance job will run asynchronously in the background. Click on the job to monitor it. Now that it has completed, click Close. You can see that the two appliances are now listed here in the cluster. Click Dashboard. You can see that the two appliances are shown on the dashboard and the total capacity has increased to reflect both appliances. This concludes the demonstration on adding a new appliance. This is the end of the video. For additional resources, please check the following related white papers on dell.com slash storage resources and user manuals and product documentation on dell.com slash PowerStore docs. Thank you for watching this PowerStore video.